December 2008, the French film uh, Pour Elle was released in France. It was uh, written and directed by Fred Cavier, and we got a print sent here to the United States and took a look at it, thought it was a great piece of source material for us. Originally, we actually thought it might be something just that the company would produce, but Paul saw the film and fell in love with the concept, thought he really could amplify what was there. I saw it and loved it. It was a very slight film, 88 minutes long, very American in, in its tone, and I thought well, I could take this and, and play with the themes and expand on the characters and, and on the plot and take a, a, a French film and make it quite a bit darker which I thought was a tad perverse for an American filmmaker. Paul's idea was to take those characters and fill them out, give them complications, give them subtleties, and make it a little bit darker. I really loved the questions that they raised, and I wanted to try and really ask tougher questions and, and answer some of those questions, or at least have the characters attempt to answer some of those questions. But what part of our life is truly under our control? He really, I think, focuses on character pieces you know that's his forte as a writer is he really delves into character and I know that when he saw the original he thought oh it's a great concept I really want to dig into who these people are a man will do anything for his wife and the conundrum you know to achieve what he achieves he has to turn into somebody that his wife couldn't love you know so uh, that to me was an interesting journey to go on John. First question I asked myself was where. I wanted it to be someplace uh, within three or four hours, well, about a six hour drive of the Canadian border. It was if they're going to escape, I wanted them to go north, not south. Uh, and I wanted it not to be obvious, so it couldn't be Chicago, Detroit, etc. So that started eliminating those cities. I also wanted it to be a city that uh, was not iconically um, American, so New York, Chicago, Seattle, LA. I wanted it to, be, to represent any place in America. Uh, so this, this story could happen to anyone. This movie is about somebody who just makes a hard choice and gets gritty about it. And Pittsburgh allows us the gritty. Pittsburgh truly is a character in the film because I, I wanted it, this to be placed in a city that, that used to be one thing and is now another. Pittsburgh, as everyone knows, was a steel town and that generation, which was character's father, would have been a steel worker. And now Pittsburgh is a city of education, of medical facilities, of research, and that's the world that's putting John in. So he is a teacher, but not a teacher at a university, a teacher at a community college. So he isn't even the, the top of that profession. So he would think of himself as a bit of a failure, and certainly in his father's eyes, or at least in the way he sees his father, he would think that he wasn't really a man. He was not the, the, the classic character, the, the World War II uh, veterans that we look up to and go, yes, that, those are men. So uh, because if we look at his dad, you go, oh, yes, he'd break his wife out of prison, and he'd, he'd, he'd succeed. But I wanted you to look at John Brennan and go, oh, this poor guy hasn't got a chance. This is a very simple bloke. You know, he's uh, an English teacher in a uh, community college. Um, and this situation has come crashing into an otherwise relatively placid life that the two of them were leading with their young child. The great thing about Pittsburgh is real people. These are just everyday folks. You know, you can believe this could happen to a couple living in Pittsburgh. We said, well, let's go to Pittsburgh before we write the script and take a look. And we went there, and in two days, we, we basically had the feel of the movie. We looked, we, we rode the trains, we said, we could set a sequence here on the trains, it would be great. We visited the county jail, the largest jail in the world, and they were wonderful to us. They, they, they took us through and showed us all around. This script was actually written with Pittsburgh in mind, so the geography of Pittsburgh and the cityscape and the bridges and tunnels and the Allegheny County Jail are all you know, heavily featured in, in the actual writing. So we planned out and mapped out, sort of really walked out everything that would happen, and then I went away to write the script. We share an office, which was a large uh, room, and we, we, uh, he sits on one side, I sit on the other, and he, he would be working away writing scenes, and as he would write a scene, he would hand them off and say, hey, look at this, look at this. So the, the interplay and the, and the exchange was highly collaborative, but it was also very fast, and he, he, he's capable of writing almost in any circumstance. It could be a coffee shop, could be the middle of the train station. He's very focused, and so he used to like to write while I'd be on the phone trying to organize and make deals to get the movie going, so that, that, would, be, that would be kind of the process. 
process. I think he would he would hear me making deals. He would write faster. I started asking myself questions like, how would I break break my wife out of jail? And I'm a writer, which is very similar to an English teacher. I had no idea. So what was the first step? Well, I'd go online. I'd Google. I'd go to YouTube. And that's what I did. Uh, I Googled how to break out of prison. Amazing results. Uh, all the stories of people who have tried, and you know, I figured out the helicopter attempt from there. Then uh, how to break into a car, how to break into a vehicle, how to, to create a, a key that'll open any lock, and I discovered the bump key. This script, which was not longer than normal, it was a 120 page script, but it had over 360 scenes, I believe, which is an enormous amount of scenes. I remember seeing Ed Zwick, who was my friend who was shooting his film at the same time, and Ed was complaining he had, had 140 scenes. <laughs> yeah, I got a few more. And it was the nature of both the story, which was a complex construct. Uh, it was it was it was sort of a caper, you know. That there was there was planning, so you had to have many little elements created to build up to the ultimate piece of action, which was the breaking out of his wife from jail. But that was very unusual. Uh, I, I think Paul was surprised at how many small little scenes he had created. Originally, I thought, what am I going to do with all this time? I have 52 days. It's the most I've ever had to shoot a movie. Uh, crash was 35 days, and the Valley of Valley was 42. And I said, 52, what am I going to do with all that time? Well, I figured it out. 380 scenes, you could really move, that's what you're going to do. It was a great fun shoot again. Um, it was a very different experience for me. So many scenes, so many shots. Uh, and the camera moved so much. Right now I have four cameras rolling. We have a, a long lens here as John and Laura come down these steps. Tracking shot over there at, uh, through the fountain, which is paralleling what they're doing. And we've got a shot inside that brings them through and downstairs. And a steady cam shot that takes them down the stairs. So we're having a lot of fun. Yeah, it's always good to shoot where you're supposed to be, you know. Um, however, that doesn't often happen. The experience shooting in Pittsburgh has been great. Uh, people are really warm and welcoming. Um, it's, I think the city's lent itself incredibly well to the story. Pittsburgh's tough. So many bridges and tunnels they can block off. From the time they make the call, the police can have the center of the city sealed tight in 15 minutes. Well, my favorite thing so far about making this movie was going to the prison and meeting the inmates. During pre-production, she wanted to um, spend some time in the jail, feel what it was like. So they, they, made, they opened the facility to her. I got to sit with about 40 female inmates, and I got to be locked in a cell and just really sort of have that experience and, and um, talk to them about being in jail and what that means and what their life is like. And, it, I have to say, once you're in there, it's really easy to imagine how hard that life is and how much you want to get out. They took her through the process where you come in, you're processed, you're, you're, you're given a room, you're, you're given your assignments, so she could feel what the routine in a jail would be like. I got locked up in a cell and I almost burst into tears. It was that horrible. <laughs> and I knew I was going to get out. So it was funny, the first thing I asked the inmates that I got to meet was, um, did you sleep the first night? And none of them, they all said no. Nobody sleeps the first night. Most of them didn't sleep the first week. You just, you can't believe that you're in there. It allowed us to move freely within the prison. To our great surprise, they let us close down sections of the jail and bring our crew in and, and stage our scenes. It was, uh, you know, an extraordinary thing for the city. One of the things that Paul wanted was he wanted the escape from the jail to be um, just really interesting. And when you're set in the heart of a city, you think it's providing a really cool backdrop for this movie. Harris, they're in the subway. Harris, the subway. Another major location for us was the, the T system, the, the subway system that they have in Pittsburgh, which is uh, where we stage a major chase sequence through the train, into the train station, through the tunnel and out the tunnel. They gave us a two hours a day to shoot on and, and gave us a, our own track that we could run back and forth on. And they were very welcoming and really made it, made it possible. I had you know, people leaping off and running through tunnels and not something you want to do on subway lines, but, but it was great. Action the train, action the train. There were 
other weekends uh, that we closed down bridges and tunnels and staged roadblocks, and car chases. So the city allowed us to to manipulate the traffic in the city throughout the uh, throughout our ship. We've shot all over the place. I mean, I don't think there's a square foot of Pittsburgh um, that we haven't shot. As we were picking locations, we wanted locations that would sort of anchor us in this place. So we set a sequence that would be at the Pittsburgh Zoo. So we shot in the Pittsburgh airport, which conveniently had a wing that was vacant and closed, so we could uh, stage our uh, chase sequence through the airport. We shot in a couple of very sort of distinctive neighborhoods. The movie is based in Pittsburgh in the Hill District, which is a district I'm familiar with. My father had a bodega in the Hill District years ago, so I know the roughness of the neighborhood and the toughness of it. Yeah, I, th I think the locations in the film is very authentic. I think uh, uh, the director and uh, the person who uh, scouted the sets did a very good job capturing a part of Pittsburgh that America don't know. Being here all the time has been good for, for us as actors to get a sense of what the place is and the pride that people have in their city. When he cast some of these extras, some of these extras, when the production leaves the, leaves the city and go back home, they return back to their normal life. And I was talking to one of the extra guys, and he was like, basically, you know, it's like it's been a life of crime, a life in and out of jail. We spent some time with the Pittsburgh police who have been very generous with their time and very generous with their information just so we can get a sense of the people that we're kind of playing. There's, you know, little things, the way they stand, the way they dress, you know, the fact that it's a, it's a very kind of um, collar and tie uh, police force. It's not uh, T-shirts and bomber jackets. These are, they dress up for work. And, uh, and that's been good to know and just, to, you know, hang out and see what the vibe is. Here. What we're doing, we're setting up here for when uh, John and Laura escape, and uh, they're coming out here, and uh, they're going to run out. Uh, Detective Nabulsi and uh, Harris, hot on their heels. They're coming over this way. They run into the middle of the street, looking back, changing their coats, and disappear over here. Uh, Nabolsi comes running out, gets in the middle of the street, camera swirls around him, and he suddenly realizes that all the folks in this end and all the folks in this end are dressed exactly like John is dressed, which is in the uh, colors of the, uh, the, the three teams here in Pittsburgh, the Steelers, the Penguins, and the Pirates. And so they're lost in the crowd. Harris, that way, go! I'm not a big sports guy, but I, I loved Pittsburgh, and I loved the fact that they, they embraced their, their, their teams, and they really support their teams. And in fact, it was while I was there that I saw <clears throat> hordes of people dressed in team colors heading through the streets, and so I decided to add that as a plot twist to the, uh, to the film. I don't know if Americans are going to look at that and think it's real, but it's there. Just, you look in the corners heading to the, towards the stadiums, and it's just mobbed with people in team colors. There's such diehard fans, and it seems to infuse almost every aspect of life. Uh, if the Steelers win, the entire town will be in a good mood. But here, everybody's in black and gold, whether they're a baseball fan or a, you know, a football fan or a hockey fan. You know? I mean, even though the Penguins have got this kind of cool light blue thing going on at the moment too, they still have a base of black and gold. So, you know, everybody's on the same team here, so I think that helps make it a friendly place. Russell, being a um, owner of a rugby team and you know a, a great uh, sports fanatic, is very interested in watching how the Steelers run their stadium, run their franchise, uh, to, looking for for ideas uh, to to transport uh, back to uh, Australia, where he runs his uh, his, uh, his his team. Uh, the hat. This is the Rabbitohs. This is this is Russell's team uh, in Australia. His football team. So we're all, we're wearing it in, in, the, in honor of his team. On the set, Russell brought. I told him I liked hockey, and he brought in one of the hockey players from the Penguins, Max Talbot, and we made friends with him. One day, uh, Russell uh, took Ty Simkin, who plays his son in the movie, to a Penguins game, uh, decked him out in gear with uh, skates and the whole outfit, and they went onto the ice. Uh, and, and, and skated before the match, and, and Ty was, was in heaven. And cut, good, one more. I was lucky enough to, uh, to get Danny Elfman to do the music for this. One of the, the highlights was getting to go to Air Studios in London and watch him record the score. The, this amazing 
players there. They're just uh, the string, the strings there, the string sections are just. Tons of directors could have done this movie. You all have your own way of doing it, and it'll all be your own particular take on the subject. And that's why it's sort of like remakes, is that a hundred artists can, can look at the same subject, and the same material, and, and come up with a hundred different films. Focus on the fence and uh, maybe a hundred mil. Some people are good writers, and they pass the material on to other directors, and the other directors got to hopefully see the vision of what the writer was writing. And, and uh, in Paul's case, I think he's, he's, he's now given the opportunity to write and direct and so he gets to bring his vision to life he's a writer director which means that we're working with somebody who has a really clear vision he sees the whole movie he saw it when he was writing it he knew what he wanted from the get-go so when we show up he is on the ball he knows what he wants he's a, you know communicates here's what we're doing and there's just no bsing around there's one point of view and that's the point of view that leads the, the entire army and you know there's very few directors who can you know who do that and for a producer it's a pleasure i love the creating the characters of the plot and twisting it around in my mind then i love to see the to work on the mechanics of pulling it together and then finally directing it and watching the actors to bring life to 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 the sort of dead words on the page it's uh that's really cool and cut great thank you beautiful day we're done thank you